another top, a segment where we talk about local news, talking points, um, events, things that's happening. What's going on out here? What's going on out here? We got my man, Quest Moore. He pretty much is what's going on out here. It's a scribe himself. A scribe so called Quest. Quest. He goes by plenty of names. Um, one name, one thing he's really known for is take him down Nova. Yeah. This man put so much of his time and energy into getting these racist monuments taken down in the city. And these racist ass statues taken down. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. You made Absolutely. some progress, huh? Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm here to talk about. You know what I mean? Um, first and foremost, it's good to be here. It's good to see some millennials representing. I just want to give y'all a shout out for doing that. Um, y'all? Uh, y'all, as in you, my brother. You're not a millennial? You, my brother. I don't know if I qualify, bro. I'm like born between '82 and '02. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, see, bro, now you got me telling all my oh, business. Oh man, you look, yeah, you look uh, so young. Right? That's because the black is don't crack. The black is never crack. I thought black you were one, of us. Never never you were one of us. You're an outsider. Shame. Uh, yes. Shame by, is upon by, you. By just a little bit. Just a little bit. Gen X. That's me. Okay. But um, yeah. But by y'all, man, I mean just like you know, fellow uh, black folk making it happen up in here and um, bringing that that young energy and message to the peoples. Um, we've been doing this work with Taking Down Nola for about 20 months now. And, uh, you know, a lot of it is passed down to us from our elders. And what I'm most excited about seeing is, you know, us pick up the torch and pass this on to the next generation coming on up. You feel me? So um, the work we've been doing um, since July 2015 has been um, specifically organizing actions and what have you to bring attention to the landscape that we live in. We know this landscape well. I heard y'all talking about last week. But what we find is as we start to like, you know, scratch on the surface, we realize it's just that. It's the surface. It's deep in this town, you know? And the symbols don't just uh, stand there as, as, you know, symbolic or representative, but they reflect what our system really is, right? And we start to dig into that system, you know, to see how nasty it is and why the corruption has always been what it is here. You know what I mean? Like, um, you're talking about uh, people that have held a tyrannical uh, regime for over a hundred some odd years since the end of slavery very intentionally. They want you to know it. And they put all of them symbols up there as exclamation points on a long life sentence of oppression intentionally. And if you learn how to read it, then you start to realize, okay, well, I can get you. And what they're ba what they, what they banking on is that, you know, um, that age-old adage of uh, if you want to hide something from a Negro, put it in a book. You feel me? And this is a landscape that needs to be read. So if you're looking at this statue, you're taking pictures in front of this guy, in front of the federal court building, and you don't know that this is Edie White, who was a <coughs> member of the Crescent City White League, which was the local version of the Ku Klux Klan, that they were responsible for the, the, the death of 3,000 black folks in the Colfax riot in 1873, the, the death of 11 black and white cops in 1874, and that they put a monument to that as well around the corner, right in front of the W Hotel, right? And it's all around the town. It's right? normalizing. Mm -hmm. it's, it's normalizing, exactly that. So, um, you know, case in point, speaking of normalization, our attorney general from right next door, Jefferson Beauregard Sessions, yes, is named after two of the monuments that we're having taken down, right? And so none of this happens by mistake. You're talking about these legacies are preserved inside of families. They're passed down generation to generation. They're given uh, uh, the, the stories, the little Johnny and little Susie, right? And little Jefferson, Right? Mm -hmm. And when they internalize that and then they move up into the ranks they've already been built for because their, their forefathers were, were politicians and, 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 and lived off of wealth that our ancestors bled for and gave our lives freely for, right? they create institutions that perpetuate the, the oppression. You feel me? Wow. So, I think I just caught a contact woke. <laughs> 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 I think it's the first time we all was, was like quiet. Oh I mean, we all were quiet and just I, like, so I, 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 I have to I have to break the, the, the seriousness it. with, with some jokes because you know part of this show is to you know, keep it lighthearted while still bringing the substance. Absolutely. And, and man, the, the, the heart got so heavy just now. Mm -hmm. just, we have a caller. Yeah. Who's that? Caller. Did somebody tell me we had a caller with us? I mean, there's some line that's, right. that's, that's so, beeping. I mean, Kyle got to figure out how to get that quite in the swinger thing. <laughs> they were swinging all over the place. So you you made some progress with, with taking down Nola recently, right? Tell us about it. We've made some progress with it. So, um, like I said, 20 months of organizing that really picks up on the on on generations of organizing that preceded it, right? So um, in that 20 months time, we organized for about five months, and in five months, this is record time, we got city council to vote six to one to have four of the monuments removed. Right. Those four are um, the ones that Mitch Landrieu presented back in July of, I believe it's July, June of 2015. What's important about that is um, 
Yeah, we did that in five months, but we capitalized on a moment of high awareness, high tension around race in the country, and he did the same. He right. did what he did in response to uh, Dylan Roof. All right, mm -hmm. so we all know that if it wasn't for Dylan Roof, it wasn't, you know, no Confederate flag coming down in South Carolina, and it wasn't going to trickle and make ripples all around the country. So, you know, being the uh, wannabe progressive that our mayor is, he jumped out what he liked to think is ahead of the, the, the bullet and, you know, said, okay, we're going to bring these four down. What's important to know about that is when he did so, that's a nice uh, statement he did, nice gesture. He had an awesome speech, right? Mm -hmm. But none of this stuff holds up in a court of law if you don't have some kind of law behind it. The law that was behind it was put in place by organizers that organized with us to this day. Right? And that's an ordinance that I can't remember the name or the number of, but it basically says, and this is in place in New Orleans, and this is why I really need you know, us to get activated around it. It says that um, any symbol in the city that represents the supremacy of one group over another, the inferiority of a group, has the right to be removed. Right. Which is a Pandora's box law waiting to be acted upon. It mm -hmm. means any time that we get ready to take to the street and, and make them answer to their own law, they have to pull down half of the city. Yeah, because I just read this, that they are, uh, the lampposts along the, uh, the new streetcar line on mm -hmm. Rampart, um, like uh, along the base of those lampposts, they commemorate different domination periods in the state of Louisiana. On one side is uh, the point where uh, Spain dominated, on one point is where France dominated, there's a point of American domination, but there's a, a point of Confederate domination. And it's only four years, 1861, 1865, yeah. they devoted a whole side of all the, 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 the light poles along the streetcar line to those four years of Confederate domination. And some of that's history, and you know, there's the whole historical preservations argument stuff got to stay up because we're a living museum and that's great and that's fine and that's but see that, that, and some of it's uh, celebration. Uh, well, when you get to that, uh, what you said, historical preservation, yeah, preservation yeah, it's not like we got a whole bunch of... But but what but what if a whole bunch of Jewish kids was going to school named after Hitler? Absolutely. We wouldn't be whooping that oh pres be preserving and that's history. Screw that right. history. Certain times you got to move past it. Exactly. That was the point of these laws, getting new laws coming into action, taking place to get us to new places. Right? I mean, right. that's the point. Yeah. Okay, and so on top of that, like Robert E. Lee never set foot in New Orleans, right? So that's not our history. Right. On top of that, uh, we got all kind of amazing history right here in New Orleans that we should be celebrating. Uh, shouts out to my man Malik. I just saw he posted on IG. Mm -hmm. They got a uh, second line Indian celebration tonight of Sam Malo. Sam Malo was one of our greatest Maroons ever. Mm -hmm. He left slavery. He created his own colony. If you tried to come into his space, it was off with your head. And eventually they hung him right there in Plaza de Arms, which is today Jackson Square. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you want to take Andrew Jackson down, which is another one that got to go, mm -hmm. which is why we say we're only just getting started, put one up a Sam Malo. Straight up. Right. about Charles de Long? It was Charles de Long. Let's go. Right? Holla at Come on, straight up. He had the Eleven slave revolt. We right? had to find out about the slave result, revolt in Louisiana on our streets that ended in ca on Canal Street of all Through places. Play, yeah. Through a play, we had to learn this. You ain't going to learn that in school. You straight up. got one book on it that some renegade scholar came up with. So shouts to that scholar, Albert Thrasher. Shouts out to Malcolm Suber. Leon Waters, the people that brought us that knowledge and information, because people like Michael, for example, didn't just sit on the knowledge. They said, okay, boom, city, you're going to change these names, right. right? And so from like 90-something, I came here like 93, and from there to about 2007, 27 school names were changed. Right. So this has been mm -hmm. done quietly. But we're saying this don't need to be done quietly. This is a cultural transformational moment. So what we're doing on March 23rd, this Thursday coming up, Cafe Istanbul, we got a town hall. We're going to talk about the history of how the people made this happen, not how it just came out the blue or how Miss Landry was responsible. We know for a fact that even on December 10th, 2015, they weren't about to have that hearing. We put a meme out on IG. You can go check the Take Them Down NOLA IG, where we shamed and blamed city council for sitting on their behind after all these city officials and commissions had already made the decision to remove them. So, so it's from our push. Just repeat the, the time, date, location of this. Uh, yeah, yeah, my bad. I'm going to get back to that. But I just want to make the point, like, we're going to show all those details in terms of, like, there were strategic, specific things we did that made the city get off their hands, that made them get off their feet and actually do something. And we want people to know that, like, this is not happening by mistake. It's happening because they were scared. When they set up the um, hearing in the first place on December 10th, it was because we did an action on Bayou Classic, November 28th. We put a, a Klan's hood on Edie White's head. Oh. Now, that didn't last for so long, but it went digital. Right. And, and, and before you know it, a, a, a letter came out from the city saying, okay, we're finally going to talk about this thing that Mitch had introduced way back in June, and they had to let it sit, right? And then we watched the court case happen for 15 months. So come out on March 23rd, and we're going to get into the details of that whole trajectory and then talk with y'all about our next steps. But ultimately, we want to see a second line for this. We want to see yeah. like everybody in the city celebrating this, like this is a big deal. We got to celebrate the fact that you know we did this and we can do so much more besides even just statues but i'm talking about uh changing the minimum wage i'm talking about we're the number one prison capital in the world's in history in the world mm -hmm. history let's see if this this caller coming through who is this yes. does it come through like this 
I so guess So, Quest, that's March 23rd. What time and where? 6.30, Cafe Istanbul. All right. Yeah. Let me see what, what day that falls on. What is that? That's going to be Thursday. Right, Thursday, March 23rd, yeah. Thursday. Mm -hmm. Do we have a caller or not? We have two, but I'm not sure how this is connected. Okay, well, um, <coughs> okay, we'll turn off the dial tone. <laughs> All right, so. Quest more, man. Uh, so, do you have a misbelief story? Man, I knew y'all was gonna hit me with this, bro. Say, bro, I'm a, uh, yes. uh, like I told you, I, honestly, I have absolutely no misbelief story. Mm. Honestly, this has been a teachable moment because I didn't know what the hell a misbelief was. Oh. My, mis my misbelief yeah. story is this, though. Uh, taking a banger's um, backyard hangout. And you and India were sitting back there with this little orange that mason counts. jar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I got right. That oh, counts. man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, so you can say it on the radio. We can't say nothing. But like, Ooh. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that counts as a misbelief it story. It tasted wonderful. Yeah, it's supposed to. Thank you so much, man. Absolutely. Man, God, Quest, you're doing so many things in this city, bro. Right? Like, you, you have so many slashes to your name. Just the slash, you are, man. You, first, you are a poet. Poet slash. Poet before anything. Educator. Slash. slash Actor, slash, uh, activist, slash, slash playwright, saying, uh, playwright, playwright, yeah, slash. That too. Um, you know, life, love, all that. Love Teacher, life, are, you a, are you a Jehovah specialist? You're like, you're a Jehovah's witness, boy. You're you a lot of glorious, boy. Oh, man, get out of here, bro. Get out of here. No, yeah. you get out of here. Right. Right. All right, y'all. Don't do it like that. Quest more, man. Thank you so back. much, bro. Yeah, you'll be back. Yeah, yeah, you're going to have something. You're going to have some new developments, and we're going to update our listeners to what Quest more got going on. You might not be a millennial. But we asked with you tough. Man. Tough, hey, man. Hey, we right across the fence, bro. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You know what? Is it time to go?